My name is Gleekos and this is my art book collection. Now this may seem like a lot of art books to you guys, but this in no way reflects what I would actually like to own. I actually haven't been able to really buy many art books since I've got out of college because usually, um, not always, but sometimes they're on a little bit on the pricey side, especially if it's like a fandom book and whatnot. But um, I asked if you guys would be interested in seeing my art book collection and one of you said that you would, so I figured uh, this would be a nice video, so we'll see. Um, instead of going through all of these books, I was just gonna pick a couple of my favorites and go over why and so on and so forth. And if you guys would like to see more than me, you of course are free to ask. But um, I'm just gonna go over a couple of my favorite art books and why they're my favorite, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Okay, so I think it goes without saying that Juicy Ink by Tori Ann is obviously one of my favorites and I'm not gonna go over this personally because I already went over her book in my inspirations video and I will put that link up there for you right there but here's just a quick view and obviously yes I'm in love with my good friend Tori and if you haven't picked up Juicy Ink and you still can I highly recommend it now the piece de resistance is obviously J. Scott Campbell's Rough Stuff. His sketchbooks are absolutely marvelous, and it's the only one that I've actually seen look like an actual sketchbook. It's crazy. Feels like a sketchbook. It's modeled after a sketchbook. Even the paper, if you feel it, is textured like a sketchbook, as if you were to pick it up off of the shelf. Now, if you look closely, I mean, obviously he does a lot of work for Marvel, lots of stuff for comic books, and even Disney, the villains, but his sketching is just so tight. It's so tight. Like, his lines are so thin, and even when he's being loose, it's just, oh, uh, his process. But he shows you that he goes through several processes of laying out his work, and he adds more and more detail each time. So more or less, he kind of draws the same thing over and over again. Sometimes he draws, you know, just the figure and figures out like to get a layout of what he wants to do and then pick the one that he likes the best. And then he'll take that further. But you can see like how he just <laughs> in quotation does a simpler drawing and then takes it further. And I could go on and on forever about him, but he's just. I don't need to tell you, he's fantastic. And so is his books. It's amazing. I could drool over it for hours and hours and hours. And it's exactly what it is, a sketchbook. Now, another one of my favorites, and I know I'm going to get a lot of rag for this, but you guys know I'm a big Iron Man fan. And I have all of the concept art books for Iron Man, <laughs> be it one, two, three, and then, of course, Avengers. Now, regardless of to what your opinion might be on the movie, if you're a Marvel fan, if you're an Iron Man fan, or even if you just, you know, want to get behind how the process they went through to get all of his technology, drawing that really difficult mecha stuff, I mean, all those details that they do for whether it be not just the costumes, but the set, his technology, Stark Expo, the artists and the designers and everybody just put so much work into this movie. I mean, look at that. That looks like a freaking picture. It's crazy. This artist, uh, I can't find his name right now at this moment, but he does the concept work for a lot of the Marvel concept books. He did all of it for all the Iron Man movies. He did it, I believe, for both of the Captain America movies. And he's just, I wish I could steal his powers somehow, but even like these suits, they look like they're real. The one of the Mark V is my absolute favorite. I don't know why, but the Mark V aesthetic wise is my favorite suit. But his paintings, I mean, you can clearly see that they took a lot of movie shots from the digital paintings and watching it go from painting to film is just an amazing process. These paintings are amazing. Even if you don't like digital work, even if you don't like hyper-realism, clearly there's a style to this and it's just incredibly inspirational. Even if you aren't an Iron Man fan, it's just phenomenal, the talent here. Um, one of my favorite artists ever that I don't really give a lot of credit to is Ian McKaig. He did a lot of work for Star Wars. He <laughs> has a lot of fun, simple, whimsical stuff. And I love that he draws dachshunds too because I have a dachshund, Phoebe. And I draw her silly and just... He's one of those people who can characterize things and then he can make beautiful, 
elaborate, detailed. He does a lot of fantasy pieces, but oh my God, just the color and the tone and the texture is just, it's wonderful. It's realistic, but he has just this style to it that is utterly amazing. And his sketches are just, oh my gosh, they're just, he obviously, he understands texture, he understands anatomy, he understands form, he understands shape, he understands value, like, he has it down, he knows what he's doing, and he's just, ugh, he's like a flipping sketch god, I absolutely love him so, so much, he's incredible, I wish I could steal his powers too, but his book, Shadow Line, you can, if you're a Star Wars fan, then you'll appreciate that too, he has a lot of, um, concept art that he did for Star Wars in there and it's just I'm not even like I don't know a whole lot about Star Wars please don't kill me I, I it's been a long time since I've seen it I was just the wee baron when I saw it but there's a lot a lot a lot of concept work for Star Wars and just he has so many styles and he's so adaptable and he can pretty much do anything I'm convinced that he can do anything I'm convinced that if they said um we need you to fly he could do it but just storyboards concept art this gorgeous picture that is you know of Amidala oh his sketches I uh, uh, I could go on forever I, he's just oh uh, it's phenomenal his sketches are like when I try and mess messy sketch like that it looks like poop and then he does it and it's like I don't know. He's amazing. Ah, maybe you don't like textures, but Ian McKay is awesome. And I got obviously a lot of inspiration towards the fantasy sort of things. He likes to draw a lot of female centaurs. I've wanted to draw like female unicorn centaurs from him, but oh, amazing. Yes, another one of my favorites is one that recently came out is the concept art book for Dragon Age Inquisition. And you don't have to really play the game to appreciate this art. I mean, obviously, it's a... Uh, is it technically an RPG? Well, anyways, whether it be character design, environmental concept, these artists are going to blow your mind. All of the work and, like, elaborate planning that goes into the just their facial expressions, their hairstyles, what they're wearing. Everything is like so elaborately planned out and worked over that it's just, I just can't even, I can't even. They're so beautiful. Um, I'm sure you all know about, you know, the craze, the tarot card craze where a lot of the art um, that they did in the actual game was based on, see, there's an environmental creature creation, but it's just, it's just so beautiful, and it's so cool to see these concept paintings, and if you had played the game, you're like, oh, I know what that is, or where that was, and just them figuring out is just, ugh, it blows my mind, but, um, and there's more again, and just more character design, I don't think that they actually, well, yeah, that, um, one painting of hers on one of the tarot cards, but the tarot card thing is just amazing. They put so much thought and detail and just effort into this. And it really shines through. And it's so inspirational. And it's reasonably priced as well, if you appreciate this thing. And here's even some of their environmentals. Like, I don't really go for environmentals. But in a game like Dragon Age, obviously you have to. And they did not squelch or pander at all from putting time and effort into planning out their environments and it's flawless absolutely flawless brave is another favorite art book of mine simply because they started out doing a lot of their stuff traditionally and i am a sucker for traditional stuff because you know we live in a digital age now and you know for me i kind of feel like i'm competing against a lot of people because they mostly everyone is doing digital artwork right now and I feel like you know I kind of am obligated almost to stick to my guns on traditional because if I don't I feel like you know it'll die out somehow but anyways you can see a lot of these early concepts were traditional artwork and obviously that is a personal preference of mine and it greatly appeals to me because I think, you know, in this day and age, it's important that we stick to keeping traditionalism alive and well. And it's just, it's beautiful. It's like any other Disney concept art that you would imagine. It's beautiful. 
the character design, the world design, the sketches. There's many, 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 many artists that they had working on this. They started working on this, I believe, in 2004. So they were working on Brave for a very long time. So it's always fantastic to see where they start and end on a concept and what they change and their process is just very educational. <clears throat> All right. So finally, we have Terrell Whitlatch. Now, if you enjoy creatures and monsters and all that stuff like I do, then this book, oh my gosh, her animals reel and in, in between is she's okay. Obviously I'm starting on unicorns. She can do hyper realistic, stylized, caricaturized, whatever you want it. Chick breaks down the skeletal, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the whole shebang. The whole freaking shebang. She's doing her freaking homework and memorizing it like a supercomputer and pumping this out like it's nothing. It's, oh my gosh, this is what we should be doing times 20 million bajillion fulfillion, like all the stuff that you're like, damn, I should be memorizing the anatomy for animals and people to perfection like she is in order to make proper character, you know, elaborations and create my own monsters and we're lazy. But if you want to step your game up and you want the proper kick in the ass to be like, shit, I highly recommend this book and I highly recommend her art because she's putting all of us to shame. I challenge you to find a more elaborate, more practiced and uh, person who just does their homework better than her and comes out on top. I mean, look at how she goes from cute to photorealistic and silly caricatures. She does it all. She does it all. She's kind of like a female Ian, but she's doing it with animals. And oh my gosh, I can't even. I can't. Okay, so now that I've been reminded about how much I need to improve, I certainly hope that you appreciated this video and it gave you some insight to what you might like to do when it comes to collecting and finding inspiration of your own. Um, if you would like to know like maybe a list of all the books that I have, um, where to get them, feel free to ask. I mostly get my stuff on Amazon because it is usually the best price there and usually you can get free shipping. But uh, happy 4th of July, happy Eagle Pie Day. Get lots of pie inside you. Nom 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 nom. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye bye.